In this video, we're going to see how we can make an input form like this look a little bit neater. In other words, you see that we have a label followed by some kind of input field, and it, the input fields are not flush. So we're going for a look more like this, where the input fields are flush left, uh, and there's adequate spacing between the label and the field. Now, by the way, if you have a form that looks like the one I'm showing you, the uh, first question to yourself is, do you really need all those fields? But nonetheless, here we are. So we're going to use a little CSS trick that I remember from back when I taught a, an HTML and CSS uh, class. And some of the tools at our disposal are selectors. So if we think about CSS, a CSS typically works on a series of selectors where you have some kind of selector and then an open curly and then a closed curly. And between those curlies, you have the styles that you want to apply uh, for that selector. Now, what's a selector? A selector can be a type of HTML element, like an input field or maybe a, a button or anything that you can put on a, an HTML page. It can also be a class where you have several elements that are unrelated except for their class, or it can be an ID where you are specifically calling out a specific element on a page. So first of all, let's take a look at the specimens HTML, XHTML page that we've made. And you notice that we have created some H output labels and P input texts. But what does this actually resolve to when we create our page? Well, I'm in Chrome, so I can hold uh, Control and press U, and we can find out. It's a little bit jumbled, I realize that, but uh, what we're going to see is that the output labels become actual label elements, and the inputs, the text inputs, become inputs. So these are two different HTML elements, and thus they can be selected two different ways. I'm going to add one more selector, though. I'm going to add a div tag, and I'm going to say div class equals, uh, and then we'll say something like, uh, input data. I don't want to use a terribly descriptive or a terribly generic term, and that one seems to fit the bill so far. So I'm going to enclose, uh, let's enclose just our labels here, and this div tag input data, and then to make it visually satisfying, I'm going to go ahead and tab in. That won't have any material change so far on our page. If I go back and refresh, we're going to see the same page. But what it does do is it gives us an additional selector because I can say class equals input data. As a matter of fact, you know, I don't, oh, no, I, sorry, I did that, didn't I? Okay. Uh, the class is the selector we're going to use in CSS. Okay, so now we have a total of three selectors that we can use. We have the input data div tag, div is just a grouping. We have label and we have input. So these are three selectors we can use. So uh, let's remember how this page is made. This is, the, this is the JSF source of our input page, like so, the JSF source here. And we see that it is tied together with the UI composition tag to something called template.xhtml. If we look at template.xhtml, we see that it's pulling in a style sheet called uh, styles.css. So I'm going to go to styles.css. Okay. Now, how do I make a selector just for that div tag? Well, since it's a class, I use a period, and I'll say input data. Okay. And at this point, I could do something like a background color just so we can uh, verify. Let's just try it out real quick here. Uh, and we'll verify that I have my selector correct, and I'm going to choose Save, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to choose Reload. And you see that we do have our selector correct because it's now uh, putting a, a kind of that uh, brownish or tan background behind the form. Now, that we can take away. We're just looking at our selector. Okay, next step. Uh, we actually want to make a more complicated selector. We can have a more specific selector by saying, okay, input data, but within input data, I only want to apply something to input, HTML input elements, okay? And what am I going to supply to that? Well, I might give it a margin left. So I might say, okay, 
uh, margin left, and then we'll say 9 EM, where EM is kind of like just a, a relative element. And uh, th that's good enough so far. So let me save. And I'm going to go back and refresh, and let's see what we get. Now you see that the it, these labels are now, that's a, a length of 9 EM that you see. So you see we have a bit of additional spacing, but they're still not flush. And to handle that, we have to do a bit more trickery in CSS. Now the trick that we have to do is we have to tell the input boxes to not make their distance from the left relative to the label. Instead, we have to say make your distance from the left relative to the very left, not including the label. In other words, we have to take the label out of the equation. So what we're going to do then is we're going to make a selector just for that label. We're going to say dot input data label. Whoops. Now remember what that selector is again. Input data is the class for our div tag. Label is the HTML element. That could be any HTML element. Uh, so yeah, label, input, uh, submit button, anything that we can put on HTML as an HTML tag can be a label. The nice thing, by the way, about this input is think about everything that's an input. Input type equals text. Uh, input type equals password. Any of those inputs that's going to apply to any of those, which is why I used a very generic selector up above that just says input. Anyway, I digress. So for label, what we want to do is we want to say take this out of the calculation uh, for positioning for everything else in this class called input data. And we're going to say position absolute and then we're going to save. Now let's go back and refresh. Refresh and take a look. Now all of the text boxes are 9 EM from flush, flush left, not including the label. And uh, notice that they're, they're equally spaced. And no matter how long the label is, the input box is out there. Hopefully we've left enough space. If we end up with a really long label, we might want to ask ourselves, do we need a label that long? Remember, concise is key when we're thinking about web design. Uh, so we want to say as much as we can in as few words as we can. But if we do have a label that goes on forever, uh, maybe for a legal requirement or something like that, then we'll just bump these out maybe to 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. or whatever is going to give it room. But as it is now, we have this positioned nicely so the form looks nice and neat. So the secrets here were a div tag with the input data class and a dot selector, which is going to select based on that class, the input selector for an input field, and then the label selector for the label. Uh, very important, make sure that you're using the H output label tag in JSF to create those labels and the P input text to create the text fields. Uh, if you're not using JSF, if you're using just normal HTML, then a very similar concept. What we're going to do is we're going to say label, first name, close label, and then input type equals text, name equals first name. And with that, we're going to get the exact same uh, behavior that I got here using JSF. All right, hope that video was helpful. Thank you.